Thank you. So I'd like to welcome everyone to this session on current developments in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. My name is Jörg Hackmann, I'm a professor at Szczecin University in Poland and incoming president-elect of uh, ALBS. Uh, I think much of our talk today will not only focus on the developments within the three Baltic states, but particularly on the impact uh, of Russia's attack on Ukraine as it dominates all debates uh, in the last weeks and months. Uh, and I think so, uh, so we will be talking uh, on the impact on the larger Baltic Sea region in these days. Uh, the direct uh, repercussion of this, uh, of Russia's attack in Germany, a debate about Zeitenwende has uh, emerged, so turning point in history has been launched by the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, but one might ask so whether German politicians and society have already accepted the point that we are facing such a Zeitenwende, and of course we might respond to this question also to other uh, societies. But there is a historical and literary predecessor to this idea of uh, Zeitenwende, namely Johann Wolfgang Goethe, so the famous German writer, who wrote that he was approached during the cannonade of Valmy in France uh, in September 1792 by the surrounding people to give his opinion and he stated here and today a new epoch in history of the world has begun and you can say that you have, were present at it. So, um, things however are not so clear and there were no witnesses uh, that Goethe really made such a statement on the day of the battle. Uh, outside of Army. So, uh, and it has been therefore assumed that this sentence has been invented by Goethe much later. So, meaning that the Zeitenwende became clear only post factum and not in real time. So, the question is uh, how to assess the attack on Ukraine? Is this already the Zeitenwende or has it maybe uh, happened already earlier in 2014 or some other uh, date? Or is it still before us? And what does it mean for the Baltic states and the larger Baltic Sea region? So I think uh, this is a major point we will discuss um, discussing this morning. And I'd like to introduce uh, briefly our guests. And I start with uh, Lima Jurevicuni, who is um, Consul General of the Lit uh, Republic of Lithuania and Los Angeles since 2021. And um, Mrs. Jurevicene has made a long career in the Lithuanian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, including Ambassador at Large for Human Rights, Head of Middle and East uh, and Africa Division, and Foreign Policy Advisor to the Prime Minister. And she has been Ambassador of Lithuania to the Council of Europe. Then we have Maris Selga, who is Ambassador of the Republic of Latvia to the United States since. September 2019. Before he was ambassador to the People's Republic of China and was, has also had a long career at the Latvian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, <coughs> among others head of American <coughs> Division and Counselor for Security Issues. And he has been ambassador to Egypt, Jordan and the United Arab Emirates. And third, we have Christian Frick, uh, who is the Estonian ambassador to the United States since May 2021, and uh, Mr. Prick uh, has served in several positions um, as a permanent secretary of the Estonian um, Ministry of Defense. From 2015 to 2017, he was a director of the National Security and Defense Coordination Unit of the Estonian government, and he was also defense counselor at the Estonian Embassy in Washington C before. I think we suggest to start with uh, statements by each of the ambassadors of um, max, uh, maximum uh, 10 minutes and then uh, open up uh, the floor to uh, questions uh, from the auditory mm -hmm. and then we'll have afterwards have a final statement by the ambassadors. Mm -hmm. And I assume that we or I suggest that we start with um, Ambassador Jura Vicene and then move up maybe in the geographical direction then continue with uh, Ambassador Zelga <coughs> and finally 
ambassador brief, if you agree. So, and then I will pass the mic to you. Okay. I think I can't disagree. <laughs> 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 okay, but I expected to be said one, but okay. So, good morning to everybody. For me, it's really very early morning. I thought maybe I never had such panel in such early morning. <laughs> but, um, okay. It's, it's good to, to have some, like, one first time. So at first I would like to thank organizers for, for this conference. It's, it's really a very great event. I had the pleasure uh, on Friday uh, to participate in many sessions. It, it's amazing. It's, it's really a very, very good conference. And it's my own and pleasure to, to be here today. Uh, the the um, uh, panel was named like current, uh, current situation, current issues in Baltic countries. And when I started to talk, what about to talk, and uh, to think what about to talk, and then when you think about the economy, when you think about politics, when you think about daily life, immediately at first it's coming war in Ukraine. So it's topic which affected, it's issue which affected, situation which affected everything. And uh, this Russia unprovoked, unjustified military aggression against Ukraine is affecting people not only in this union, not in Baltic countries, but in all corners of the world. Over three months of full-scale war in Ukraine. Three months. It's horrible. And um, you can read many statistics, uh, how many people killed, uh, how many cities destroyed, how many people left their houses. But uh, for me, when I, uh, two days ago, read um, information from uh, written by uh, Commissioner for Human Rights, Ukrainian Commissioner for Human Rights, uh, Mrs. Denisova, that 240,000 children was, uh, even to cut to talk about that, was uh, brutally taken and, and uh, to forcibly deported to Russia. For me, it's, it's, it's something unbelievable. It reminds me time when uh, our people was uh, deporting uh, to, to Siberia. So, but now it's happening 21st century Europe, now, amazing. So Russian war was an eye-opener for many, but it just reinforced what we, Lithuania, were saying before. Russia was and is a threat for Ukraine, other neighboring countries, but also for the rest. The war is not only to conquer Ukraine territory or to stop European transatlantic integration, but to challenge Western values, international law, norms, norms and rules. On May 10th, Lithuania Parliament voted unanimously to recognize Russian war against Ukraine as genocide and Russia as a terrorist state. What we have to do? We have to ensure the victory for Ukraine and strategic defeat of Russia. The conditions for ending the war must be set in Ukraine. We should do our best to support Ukraine. Western democracies demonstrated unprecedented unity and decisions, full support and military assistance to Ukraine, rapid and strong sanctions to Russia, and it is not only EU and US, Canada, Japan, Australia, North Korea, South Korea, and others joined. German Switzerland took historic decisions. Sweden, Finland, membership to NATO, another historic change. All this makes a tectonic shift in the world. All these actions are important and should be continued and enhanced. We cannot permit fatigue or slow down. Russia does not slow down. We live in a different world where appeasement is not a solution. We, Western democracies, have to strengthen our alliance to learn to live independently from Russian Federation gas and oil. Early in April, Lithuania has become first European country to stop using Russian gas. From 22nd of May, Lithuania completely cut import of Russia energy supplies, oil, electricity, and gas. Energy independence from Russia must be a EU, European Union ultimate goal, said our president. Therefore, we support Ukraine. Lithuania, Lithuania, as a country, is among the biggest supporters of Ukraine. According to the data of the Kiel Institute for World Economy, 
Lithuanian government contributed almost 0.2% of its GDP and takes sixth place on the list of Ukraine because it posted in relation to economic output. Lithuania as well is in the top of 15 of military donors, donors to Ukraine, according to different estimates. The Defense Ministry has announced that Lithuania is preparing a new aid shipment worth 15.5 15 million euros to Ukraine. The new shipment will bring the total value of Lithuanian military assistance to Ukraine to around 100, 115 million euros. Defense Ministry of, that of Lithuania also contributed, also it confirms that Lithuania is also contributing to helping Ukraine in the treatment and the rehabilitation of wounded soldiers. A mission to train Ukrainians the mining instruction instructors in Lithuania is also discussed. Also, I would like to note that we already from 2014 were training um, uh, uh, Ukrainian army and helping them in, in different matches. But what is most important, it is people's contribution. The Baltic News Service survey end of March shows that more than 50% of Lithuanians have donated money or found other ways to help Ukraine. Now I think figures is, is, is bigger. Also, I would like to mention our diaspora. Lithuanians around the world support Ukraine in different forms. Thank you very much. I think many of them are here today. Among the top 10 of foundations, companies, and individuals to support Ukraine is Blue Yellow, a Lithuanian non-governmental organization that has been supporting Ukraine armed resistance since 2014. It provides Ukrainian soldiers, volunteers, and territorial defense forces fighting for the freedom of Ukraine with non lethal supplies. They raised more than 25 million. Blue Yellow is the second largest foundation in the world supporting the armed forces of Ukraine. As a Lithuanian organization sending humanitarian help to Ukraine and helping Ukrainian refugees include Lithuanian Red Cross, Strong Together, Small But Strong, Helping Wing, and others. There are many, many initiatives, projects, support, and reactions, rallies, whatever. But one particular was just started a few days ago, on May 25th, Lithuanian journalist and social media personality Andrew Stapinas has launched a crowdfunding campaign to buy a Bayraktar, TB2, military drone for Ukraine, it's, which is produced in Turkey. The campaign aims to raise 5 million euros in three weeks. In three days, we already have 3.5 million. So you see, it's like we can do if you together something. Ukraine refugees now make 2% of the population in Lithuania. A total of 54,004 refugees from Ukraine were registered in the end of May. The flow of newcomers continues to decline. Many of them, one search, Ukrainian refugees in Lithuania have already found jobs. By the end of April, more than 7,000 Ukrainian children were attending schools in Lithuania. We strongly support granting, granting Ukrainian EU candidate status. I think it's, we must to do it. On 28 February, the country president, Vladimir Zelensky, signed a formal request to EU to admit this country to 27 member bloc. On March 10, the Lithuanian parliament has adopted a resolution calling Ukraine to be granted <coughs> EU candidate status. In early March, the presidents of Lithuania, Poland, Latvia, Estonia, Czech Republic, Slovenia, Bulgaria, Slovakia signed an open letter to EU, EU leaders urging them to support Ukraine's EU membership request, to grant the country candidate status, and to start accession talks as soon as possible. Like I said, when Ukraine, United Lithuania, all political parties, all populations support Ukraine, stand with Ukraine, who understands that their fight, they fight war for their territory, but also for us, for our values. In the end, I would like to mention a few points for Lithuanian and Baltic security and defense. Situation in Belarus. Rapid de deployment of Russian Federation troops, troops to Belarus and war from Belarus territory demonstrated that Belarus is part of Russia, at least military. Russian Federation NATO border is now Lithuania 
Belarus buvo dėl Latvijoje, Belarus, Poland, Belarus buvo dėl. Kaliningrad region remains most militarized region in Europe with ice kind of missiles and etc. Baltic security and defense is a very big challenge and Suralki gap remains a weakest point of NATO. Seeing what the Russian Federation does, we have to revise our posture and strengthen defense and security. We hear, and very grateful for, President Biden saying that the United States will protect every inch of NATO territory. It is very important. We have to ensure we have capabilities to do that. We are grateful for the United States and allies enforcement, which were done just before the war, or in the beginning of the war. It is very important. We have to further strengthen NATO and U.S. military presence, ensuring our air defense having NATO brigade instead of battalion. U.S. battalion are in Lithuania on rotational basis since 2019, and we expect them to stay in Lithuania. Their present is the best deterrence for the Russian Federation. So, I will yeah. end here. Yeah, thank you very much. And then we continue with um, Ambassador Sega. You have the microphone. Yeah. <coughs> Good morning. Is it working? Yes. Yeah. Okay, maybe you have to speak close to the microphone. You're right here with it, yeah, next to me. Um, I mean, it's really a pleasure to be uh, here in, in uh, Seattle and in this uh, AABS conference. Of course, I would like to thank organizers, I mean, for this possibility. So I think we missed this panel in uh, Charlotte in 2020. So, but uh, we are happy, uh, happy to be together here as well. So, as a recent COVID survivor, I think I uh, have a little bit more cottage cheese in my head. So, so <laughs> I have, to, have to use actually glasses. I have to use a paper. I mean, for for uh, my points as well. Uh, of course, February twenty uh, fourth was a shocking and painful day for all of us, and many people uh, use the word surprise to s describe how they felt when the TV channels around the world showed Russia attacking uh, uh, our neighboring Ukraine. Uh, people could not believe that in 21st century, tanks would be rolling over the borders of the European country as bombs will fall in the cities. It was not just society which was surprised, many governments were surprised as well. And many of my colleagues were surprised. But there were also a small minority which was not surprised, those were Baltic countries, because we were not surprised by invasion and we are not surprised by what is happening in Ukraine today. The Baltics never carried illusions about Russia's potential for aggression. This is why we strongly oppose the construction of Nord Stream 2 and why we insisted on a strong NATO and US presence on our borders. Of course, we had hoped that Russia would restrain itself. We had hoped that Ukraine would be allowed to freely and democratically choose its future. But February 24th was exactly what we had been warning all our allies about for years. Unfortunately, a told you so does not bring satisfaction when we see the devastation of Ukraine and listen to stories of the war crimes committed by Russian troops. But it does illustrate the importance of the Baltic perspective. When it comes to understanding and responding to Russia, the Baltic states need to be listened to. This is why events such as the Conference on the Baltic Studies are so important, as the work done by the Association for the Advancement of Baltic Studies. If we want to live in a world where Russia does not pose a security threat to its neighbors, it is vital that NATO, the United States, and the global community at large listen to the Baltic states. This brings us to the question, why, we, why were we right about Russia? Why should other countries didn't listen to us? Throughout our history, we have been next to Russia. We have fought with Russia, we have worked with Russia, we have signed agreements with Russia, we have traded with Russia, we have adopted sanctions against Russia. And as you all know, we lived for 50 years under Soviet occupation. We have also been and remain a refugee, refuge for Russians. Before the Soviet occupation, many Russians fled to Latvia to escort communism. Today, Russian journalists and dissidents continue to seek refuge in Latvia. I want to emphasize that the Baltics are not anti-Russian, as Russia itself tries to portray us in its propaganda. It would be in our interest to have a strong, democratic and developed Russia as our neighbor. In fact, before the Russian annexion, annexion of Crimea in 2014, our trade and economic relations were at the all-time high. 
The sanctions we adopted after 2014 were very painful for us as well. In the world where Russia is not an aggressor, the Baltics would be more than happy to work a trade with our neighbor and both sides would see immense benefits. Unfortunately, that is not the world where Vladimir Putin wants to live in. Putin's world of oligarchy, corruption, aggression and imperialism cannot be allowed to thrive in the 21st century. We have seen that ruthless director, dictator can do. After World War II, we collectively said, never again. We must now show that we stand by these words. What are the next steps forward? Firstly, we must support Ukraine however we can. Ukraine is fighting for democracy and freedom. Ukraine is fighting for all of us. Latvia has given about 1% of its GDP in support for Ukraine. About one third of our military budget has gone to support Ukrainian armed forces. We have provided weapons and encouraged other countries to do the same. We have accepted more than 30,000 refugees and Latvian society has raised more than $10 million to support Ukrainians. We want to see Ukraine joining the European Union as soon as possible. And once Ukraine wins the war, we will stand with them to rebuild back their country. Secondly, we cannot tie and start to appease Putin. As the war continues and economies face the consequences of sanctions, we cannot allow ourselves to give in to Putin's demands. While Ukraine continues to fight, we must stand with them. Putin cannot be allowed to come out with his head held high. We can look back on Chechnya, we can remember Georgia in 2008, and we saw what Russian troops did in Syria. We especially remember the election of Crimea in 2014. We cannot allow ourselves to be naive and hope that giving in to any of Putin's demands will result in peace. Thirdly, we must not underestimate Russia and the strength of its military. The resistance and strength of Ukrainians has been an inspiration to us all. We all remember the first days of the world when top military experts predicted the fall of Kyiv within a matter of days. Yet Kyiv continues to stand free to this day. While many are surprised by the Russian military's underperformance, we must not underestimate their capabilities. The amount of Ukrainian territory Russia has under its control is larger than the territory of the Baltics. Their army should not be regarded as weak, and we should not underestimate their ability to build back what they have lost. The military threat of Russia remains very real. But we also know that there is one flag Russia fears, and that is the flag of the United States. That is why we want a permanent U.S. presence in Latvia, and the best way to avoid the war with Russia is if Putin knows that he will face United States troops. Ladies and gentlemen, this year the United States and Baltic countries celebrate 100 years since the establishment of diplomatic relations. That's what happened in July 28th. Throughout these 100 years, we faced 50 years of Soviet oppression, during which the United States never recognized our occupation, supported our struggle to regain independence, and then supported us as we joined the United Euro European Union and NATO in 2004. As we enter a new a uh, centenary of relations. It's in my, it is my hope that our partnership and cooperation will be continue to thrive and develop. The United States and Baltics must remain strong partners in trade, culture, more importantly, it is a level security and democracy. As I said in the beginning, the devastating war in Ukraine shows us that Baltic countries were right about Russia all along. We have proven that our perspective is important and it needs to be considered as we try to find ways to support Ukraine and establish peace. I hope the conferences and initiatives such as this one can serve as a platform where we discuss ideas and work together for the solutions. Uh, of course, we are looking the same as my colleagues look forward to discussing this also uh, with you further on. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>
but, uh, but just to, as a, an introduction, I'd, uh, I'd like to say that uh, for the past couple of years, it's, uh, uh, it's been uh, like two, two dominating issues, like in, in most societies, uh, it's in origin, I guess. Uh, since uh, uh, early 2020, of course, uh, everybody uh, talked about uh, uh, the pandemic, and, uh, and this was uh, something that uh, kept the society uh, in many, many ways awake. Uh, uh, of course, in the background, there were also some other other issues like uh, the uh, the uh, green transition, for example, and uh, even our society had uh, our echoes of uh, the culture wars that uh, that we can witness uh, uh, in the states or or elsewhere. But uh, uh, but since uh, let's say last uh, late last last fall, uh, the uh, the run up. Uh, to the war and the war itself has uh, uh, taken uh, everything over, uh, and uh, and this is this is only very natural. Firstly, uh, uh, the pandemic was uh, more or less un under the control, and uh, and uh, when the, when the war uh, really came in, we just decided to for uh, forget about the, the pandemic. I guess that's the uh, that's the uh, right uh, way to characterize the situation. Now. Uh, 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 how can I prove that uh, that war has dominated uh, uh, the political and uh, societal agenda? Uh, very simply, we are, uh, as we speak, we are in the, in the 95th day of, of war. Uh, during the war, uh, Estonia's population has grown uh, more than uh, 3%. Uh, as of this morning, we have uh, more than uh, 40,000 uh, refugees from, uh, from Ukraine. Uh, uh, more than uh, 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 quarter of them uh, kids, uh, the rest uh, uh, mostly uh, women and elderly. So uh, this uh, this constitutes uh, uh, around 3.4 uh, percent of our uh, our population. Also, we have uh, donated uh, Ukraine the military uh, equipment uh, uh, together with our uh, uh, Baltic neighbors. Uh, to the tune of uh, one third of our uh, own uh, defense budget. As we were told by one uh, senior US uh, administration official uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, the, the Baltic countries, by acting early and by acting boldly, meaning that we, we delivered the first uh, uh, critical shipments of, uh, for example, uh, anti tank and uh, anti aircraft. Uh, uh, weapons uh, to Ukraine before the war, uh, the war started, but when it was very obvious that uh, it was going to start. So this administration official uh, uh, told, told me that the Baltic countries probably helped to uh, change the course of history uh, by, by, this, uh, uh, by these, uh, uh, these shipments. So uh, uh, also, uh, since the war, uh, since the uh, war started to be, uh, be looming on the horizon, and during the war, the Estonian government has uh, uh, made multiple decisions to actually uh, increase our uh, defense spending uh, considerably, so that we are uh, uh, we are approaching the uh, three percent uh, benchmark of uh, our GDP. Uh, in 2024, I believe, uh, will, will be uh, this achieved. Uh, what we also see uh, due to those decisions is that uh, out of uh, uh, three or four main uh, producers of anti-tank weaponry in, U in Europe, Estonia is the top customer for two of those. Uh, as much as this speaks about uh, uh, the vigilance of Estonia, this also uh, talks volumes about the state of uh, European uh, defence and uh, and the uh, the way Europe has underestimated the conventional military threat uh, uh, for years. Now, uh, now, uh, not to talk only about the military uh, help. Uh, Estonian government, as well as uh, private institutions, as well as uh, NGOs, have delivered uh, ten, uh, tens of tons of, uh, of uh, humanitarian aid to, uh, to Ukraine uh, dif in different uh, uh, ways and uh, different shapes. 
there, there, there has been a, a massive uh, grassroots uh, initiative to uh, uh, to deliver uh, ambulance truck, ambulance uh, cars with uh, with equipment and uh, with uh, 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 with medicines uh, as part of part of this package. There have been uh, uh, initiatives to deliver four by four vehicles uh, to uh, to uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, territorial defense for, uh, uh, forces and, and many other many other initiatives like that. In addition to that, uh, private citizens have just uh, donated uh, more money than ever uh, than anyone would have ever um, uh, assumed. Now, uh, uh, politically, also Estonia has. Uh, uh, being together with our uh, Baltic friends uh, and uh, many many other countries, uh, we've been uh, uh, spearheading the effort to uh, to uh, sanction Russia in in, in many ways uh, in order to make sure that uh, the aggression does not pay off. Uh, we have been uh, in the forefront of uh, of uh, proposing and actually uh, making uh, the. Uh, European Union sanctions uh, uh, harder and uh, uh, make uh, and uh, proposing new sanctions that were not in the in the uh, initial list. Uh, we've been also uh, in the forefront of uh, of uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, the Ukrainian uh, European uh, Union Union's perspective. We certainly also believe that uh, that uh, Ukraine is. Uh, uh, well, or Ukrainian uh, uh, nation, nation deserves uh, the perspective of uh, EU membership. Uh, we we all understand that this won't happen overnight, but but, but we shouldn't deny the uh, the membership uh, uh, perspective uh, uh, to them at a time when they are going through such a uh, difficult and existential fight. Now, why why we have uh, been so active? Because uh, this is uh, uh, very much not not just about Ukraine, but this is also about uh, us. Uh, this is uh, uh, something that is very ex existential for us. If I were to uh, draw down a line in history and say wh uh, when this uh, current reality uh, really started, then I would I would go back to sixth uh, of August two thousand seven, when uh, Russian uh, military aircraft. Uh, uh, bombed or, or conducted a missile attack, a, a, attack against the uh, the radar station within Georgia proper, outside Abkhazia, uh, outside um, uh, South Ossetia, uh, uh, where, where the, the Russian so-called peacekeepers were were in by that time, but uh, but uh, within the uh, within the uh, territory that was controlled uh, by the Georgian government. Since then, uh, and, and no, no one paid too much attention. Of course, there were different uh, investigative uh, groups uh, who uh, reached the same conclusion that, uh, that the Georgian had, that it was the Russian attack, but, uh, but uh, nothing really happened. And since then, we've seen uh, uh, the, the situation only deteriorating as far as uh, Russian military aggression is concerned. 2008, uh, Georgia, 2014, uh, first Crimea, then uh, uh, then uh, Donbass, uh, and now we are in the situation where, in the heart of Europe, uh, there is a conventional uh, conventional war. So uh, we, in order to avoid this thing getting even worse, we really have to understand that Ukraine for Putin is what uh, Poland was for Hitler in uh, uh, 1939. If we don't stop him there then things will only get worse. In order to stop him there, we have to continue supporting Ukraine in any way we can, militarily, politically, economically. Do it in all fronts imaginable. At the same time, we have to uh, push Russia seriously back to make sure that Putin does not gain anything from this aggression that he did not have before this aggression, because otherwise the message is cl very clear, and not only for uh, for uh, for Putin and not only for Ukraine, but also the others in Europe and I would say globally. The message then would be that the aggression actually pays off. 
and we cannot allow that. This is uh, something that is important not only for, uh, uh, for us in the room, but uh, should be very important to everyone in America, in Europe uh, as well. And thirdly, as, as my uh, neighbors here uh, mentioned, we have to make sure that uh, we strengthen uh, NATO's def defense and deterrence posture so that no Russian sane general would advise Putin to go and, and uh, uh, conduct another miscalculation, as they say, because there have been so many miscalculations that the analysts have predicted to be miscalculations that, uh, that Putin has uh, uh, made over the years, and yet he perceives that he's been winning. So with that, I would uh, uh, stop here, but uh, I would be very willing to answer any questions from the audience. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much uh, to all of you for the introductory statements. Actually, I, I would come up with one follow-up question before uh, offering the mic to, to the auditory in just a second. And this would be, uh, how do you uh, assess the planned enlargement of NATO towards Finland and Sweden? Will this change the picture? Or would you say this is already um, something which uh, um, does not really change uh, what uh, is going on and will happen in the near future? Not sure who wants to ask first. So. But, yeah, you have the mic. Uh, so, so I, I have the, I have the <laughs> mic, so I'm going to use uh, my privilege. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, uh, firstly, uh, of course, uh, as we all know, there are, there are uh, uh, negotiations between uh, the Finns and Swedes on uh, on the uh, issue of membership with, with Turkey uh, at the moment, uh, and we we, we should uh, definitely not uh, prejudge uh, the the uh, results of these uh, negotiations. Uh, even though I, I certainly hope and believe that uh, that, uh, that these three countries will be able to to find the sensible um, uh, solution. Now, uh, for NATO, I would say uh, Finnish and Swedish uh, membership would improve considerably the situation in the Baltic Sea uh, region. Uh, and also, uh, it would just make the situation uh, uh, sort of clearer and, and uh, easier for uh, military planners and, uh, and mili military leaders in, in general, and political leaders. For Russia, uh, we witnessed over, over many years that, uh, that Russia, uh, when conducting their own military exercises, but not only exercises, for example, when, uh, when they conducted uh, uh, the war uh, against uh, Ukraine, or when they started the war against Ukraine in 2014, also in some other instances, they have acted as if uh, Sweden, and particularly Finland, would have been a NATO member uh, already back then. Certain uh, military moves, uh, uh, not that uh, public, that were taken, that were very clearly uh, uh, aimed at uh, deterring Finland uh, from doing doing something that they never planned to. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, when it when it comes to, for example, the uh, the issue of uh, uh, so-called land uh, land corridor uh, to the uh, to the Baltic states. Uh, the uh, so-called uh, Suwalki Gap, uh, Finnish or uh, Swedish membership will not change anything there. And uh, uh, land corridor is still preferable when it comes to uh, military mobility. So we still have uh, uh, serious issues that we have to tackle with uh, with uh, conventional military presence in the in the Baltics. So, Mr. Sagan, or will No, I think I do, do not have the right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, um, you know, our colleague, uh, the Estonian colleague, is uh, much better in defense and security as well. He's a minister of defense for, uh, for a couple of years, so he knows. Uh, well, I think that politically it's very important to say that probably Putin is getting what he was not expecting. And that's, I think, is good for us. So that uh, I think the region will be more united. I mean, Finland and Sweden have been 
part of the, uh, let's say, our cooperation with the NATO for, for many years already, but I think that the membership, uh, when it will happen, will uh, just strengthen our region in, in general, so that instead of a couple of uh, hundred, uh, hundred uh, miles, I mean, Putin is getting with Finland about 800 miles uh, border, so that uh, NATO somehow is uh, moving closer to, to Russia, that's, that's what he was uh, Complaining all the time, but uh, as, as Christian mentioned, mentioned, I think so. Is he he was planning, so that was a uh, couple of years ago. So that I think that's uh, good for us in general. You want to just yeah, just go. It's really you're very welcome, this step. And I think it's very important for security in the region, and you're absolutely right. And uh, I think it's Putin. He wanted to. Somehow we can NATO, but it's now it's opposite. NATO strengths. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, now we open the discussion. So if I have only one micro, so um, and I think we have to do it. Maybe I start in this direction and then move uh, forward. So actually, I have to do it a bit with to uh, spatial. <laughs> Placement. And so please identify yourself and uh, I would also kindly ask you to be brief in your questions. And, and we will collect a couple of questions. Uh, my name is Raj. I work for the Daily at the University of Washington. I've been covering the Ukraine war and uh, this is just kind of my way of getting a little bit more information. So thank you guys for coming here. I really appreciate uh, all the talk. It's a uh, pleasure to be here. So my question is, I don't think that the international trade um, question would be really ignored considering the geographic proximity of the Baltic states towards Russia. So how does um, Lithuania, Estonia, and Latvia look at weaning itself off and becoming economically independent of its closest economic trading partner? Okay, thank you very much. Um, hi. Uh, my name is Jusso Svenka from the University of Pressfeld, and my question is to all three uh, representatives of Latvia and Estonia. And uh, the planning in 2024, there's going to be an American presidential election. And there's a great chance that two very senior citizens will fight for the post. And also a chance that winner might be someone from the Republican side. We can guess who. And uh, that person has been previously quite well known about his statements about US leaving NATO. My question is uh, what is your position as a representative of your states? Are you working also with the Republican plan? Are you explaining why NATO membership for the EU of USA is so essential also for the security of Europe? And all the states, do you think we can convince uh, people in the Republican uh, camp uh, to support the union security? Thank you. So, one, take one more second. Thank you. Part of the university is possible. This plan to celebrate the anniversary of the coming year of US support relations, or is it not? Uh, Right. Mm -hmm. And time. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we uh, make uh, one round of answers. So please. Yeah, you got I, the I, I have instruments, so I will start. <laughs> um, on the trade, um, I would say uh, that uh, uh, Russian Latvia trade is very very well below 10%, so that, of course, it's very painful for those who are, those enterprises who are trading with Russia, I mean, to find a new market, and, uh, let's say, uh, transit is affected, not only, so, I mean, because of uh, the sanctions against Russia, but there are also Russian sanctions against us, uh, so that, uh, but I think we will survive somehow, and we will find, the, uh, you know, I mean, the largest issue uh, probably would be energy field. I mean, in, in Latvia's case, 90% uh, of uh, natural gas is coming from, from Russia. Uh, but uh, the parliament and government has taken decision, I think, uh, from the 1st of uh, uh, January of next year, I think we are 
Uh, I mean, even now, so we are not receiving Russian gas, so that it's, uh, we will find a different ways actually how to uh, produce electricity and also heating during, during the winter time. So, because the markets are more or less already uh, interlinked, so that I think that uh, uh, we are working together with our Estonian and Lithuanian colleagues in cutting gas and also electricity grid uh, in general. Uh, on elections, I mean, that's uh, for. Um, uh, my fellow historians in Latvia, you know, that we are coming back to the question of personalities in history, and I think I will not go into that, uh, because otherwise we will have to start to speak about if, 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 that would be, you know, then, and uh, that would be then, I mean, a couple of years ago, so. Uh, just in general, I mean, we are working with both, both parties, I mean, with Republicans and with uh, Democrats. Uh, let's say, from Latvia's perspective, I cannot say that, let's say, a uh, Republican administration or the Democratic administration is better than, than others. So, I think we are uh, well uh, voted in, in both administrations so that we have very good cooperation and either it's Republicans or Democrats. And there is uh, probably the more important, there is a very strong bipartisan uh, support on the Hill in Congress uh, from both parties regarding uh, I mean, first regarding now Ukraine, uh, regarding also issues uh, regarding uh, Russia, and, uh, and of course, uh, very good support for the Baltic, uh, Baltic cause, I mean, in, in all the fields. So, that, let's say, from from perspective of the country uh, working uh, within the country, I mean, where we are accredited, I think that we don't see any uh, any problems. If that will be a president who you mentioned, probably will be. Uh, well, I think we have had a very good cooperation also with the Trump administration, so that, that's... But uh, if you want to start, you know, discussions, you know, but why, why and how, I mean, the uh, Democratic administration, Obama's administration acted in 2014, I think that could be a topic for a completely different conference. Uh, and the last one regarding celebration, uh, we have to celebrate something. Uh, there has to be something good as well, it's not only evil, I mean, so that it's uh, probably those will be not a huge fireworks, but, but I think that during the year, I mean, all three embassies, uh, and also the respective embassies in our capitals, I think they're trying to uh, do something in order to, uh, to, you know, to cement this and to celebrate this uh, 100 years of uh, continuous actually cooperation. Because, as you know, uh, all three countries had diplomatic relations for those 100 years all the time, so that there were no interruptions at least in that field. I know that on 28th of July, I mean, and actually day at least, Latvian Post is issuing a post for the stamp, I mean, so that, you know, at least it will be a small celebration. Um, yes, thanks, Maurice. Uh, just a few points to add here. Uh, on, on trade, the picture in Estonia is uh, uh, quite similar, particularly when it comes to exports, uh, uh, the, the reliance on, uh, on uh, Russian market is uh, very minimal. I believe the, the last figures that I saw was uh, four or five percent of exports went, went to went to Russia, and uh, uh, this, this is something that we we can uh, read over from uh, uh, as far as imports is concerned. Uh, the uh, the most significant item has been uh, uh, oil and gas product products uh, because of the geography. Uh, but uh, just similarly, what uh, what uh, Maurice also said that uh, uh, in terms of uh, gas, our government has decided to uh, to uh, not take uh, any Russian uh, uh, gas. As soon as uh, technically uh, possible, we are on the course of uh, having uh, the LNG uh, uh, terminal or a place where, where the LNG ships can uh, 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 pump their, their gas uh, into a certain uh, grid ready by late uh, November. But uh, in, the, in the case of gas, I would also uh, emphasize the role of interconnectors that. Uh, that uh, Lithuania and Poland just completed, uh, and uh, there is also between Estonia and Finland. So, uh, so uh, Finnish grid is also uh, part of our, our grid, and uh, and Finland just uh, conducted a, 
agreement on with, on the rent, rental of uh, uh, liquid liquid gas uh, uh, ship uh, ship terminal that is where you is the is the term. Uh, now, uh, as far as the elections are concerned, firstly, of course, uh, uh, we are still more than two years away, and uh, and uh, all things can happen. Uh, so uh, uh, we don't know how. Uh, uh, What's, what was the term? Senior gentlemen? <laughs> How senior these uh, ladies or, or gentlemen uh, uh, will be uh, running, for, running for the post. Uh, but uh, uh, as far as NATO is concerned, uh, I mean, uh, NATO is doing, as we speak, exactly what, uh, what uh, the previous administration uh, uh, wanted NATO to do, to uh, be uh, uh, tougher, to uh, to have a uh, uh, defense uh, uh, finance at at least two uh, percent level, and uh, and uh, take more res responsibility when it comes to uh, uh, defense of uh, Europe. I mean, it cannot be done without the U.S. But uh, but uh, NATO is moving to, towards the direction that uh, that many previous uh, U.S. administration have uh, uh, insisted. Um, Yeah, I won't uh, go more detail on that. And uh, the diplomatic relations, uh, 100 years, uh, 16th and 17th of, uh, of uh, June, there will be a major conference in Tallinn. I, I hope uh, many of you will tune in on, on our uh, 100 years uh, relations and uh, there, there will be a, uh, a milestone book launched uh, on, the, uh, on the significance and on the topic of uh, Estonian and U.S. Uh, on the relations, but uh, here on the on the state side, uh, we work together with uh, 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 Baltic embassies, but it takes in that, that in that case it takes four to tango. So we are also talking to to the U.S. administration uh, to make sure that uh, uh, that uh, any uh, steps or any celebrations that we uh, plan here. Uh, have also uh, some uh, buy-in uh, from the administration. I won't go uh, too much into detail on that, but uh, but uh, uh, for Estonia, uh, reopening of the embassy will also be a, a suitable uh, event for uh, 100 years. We we hope to open it after rebuilding the embassy in late September. Thank you. Does it work? Okay, okay. sorry. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the questions. Um, talking about economic situation, actually, I look for the statistics recent, and it shows that its situation it's it's quite good, and uh, uh, export and investment it's not declining, and uh, as well, I had possibility to talk with um, our investment agency who recently visited uh, Los Angeles, and they said that. Those investors who were planning to invest in Lithuania, they did not change any their plans. So, but um, and always companies who were uh, having uh, business uh, with uh, uh, from the countries under regime, so they always had to take the risk, and the risk was taken. And um, as well, recent statistics show that. Um, uh, market, if you talk about export and import, its uh, geography changes for the best. Now our main partners are Poland, uh, uh, Poland, Latvia and Germany. On the third place actually is the United States. It's also trade increased. Um, uh, we are opening new markets like uh, Australia, North Korea, as a South, uh, South Asia, Southeast Asia countries. So there are more possibilities, and you have to look uh, for that. And our companies are looking for that, and they are finding solutions. I remember time actually when um, Russia ban um, decided not to buy uh, Georgian wine, and uh, then uh, all countries said, "Okay, but uh, we will buy like Lithuania. Let's import." And finally, they end to the to the situation that. They found new markets. If they will not be forced to found new markets, they will never be find. And and in the results, their export of wine increased and really appreciated in many many countries. 
So the same in, in Lithuania, if one door is closed and another door opens, that you, you have to look for those doors and to go through them. Um, Democrats, Republicans, uh, I mean, uh, it's not it depends on us, it depends on people of uh, United States uh, whom they will elect. And we will work with any government uh, elected by um, Americans, by people of America. And uh, as well, you talked about position. No, we will work the same. Our position will not be changed. Uh, celebration. Yes, of course, we have to. No doubt, they think and, uh, in, in uh, Washington and we will Los Angeles, we are planning some celebration. We have to show that we are not afraid. Life is going on. And especially as concerns um, 100 years anniversary. Uh, in principle, the fact that the uh, United States refused to recognize the annexation of Lithuania or Baltic states lets us to keep hope not to give up and to regain our independence. Now we work together to protect democratic values around to help others who seek to establish their freedom. Therefore, this celebration is very important. We have to show that we are united now, now and we are together to help Ukraine. It's a big, it, yeah, just very briefly, uh, I, I probably uh, avoided addressing uh, the issue of whether we work with uh, also Republicans. Of course, th this is a standard operating procedure for uh, any embassy. That, uh, at uh, any given time, we, we had to work with, uh, uh, with representatives of uh, both parties. In, in the US, it's easy. It's just two parties to, to work with, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, as far as... Uh, Maurice also already mentioned the, uh, the high level of support to uh, European security and NATO, NATO issues uh, in the Congress right, right now. Of course, uh, we shouldn't take it, take it uh, uh, as given uh, forever, but uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, the uh, Congress uh, Observer Group for, for NATO uh, uh, signed a letter to, uh, to the President on uh, Finnish and Swedish uh, NATO membership. And in, uh, I believe, one and a half days, uh, they, uh, they collected uh, in the Senate uh, 80, uh, 82 uh, uh, signatures or, or, or signatures uh, to this letter, and as uh, the uh, chairwoman of this uh, group, uh, uh, Senator Shaheen, said, uh, normally in, in this uh, current uh, polarized uh, political uh, environment, you wouldn't get uh, that many signatures in that uh, short time, uh, time frame, even for uh, to a statement that uh, on a clear day uh, the sky is blue. <laughs> because there, there are so many uh, disagreements on, on different issues, but uh, in this in this case, uh, when it comes to European security and uh, and uh, strengthening NATO, there is a very strong uh, momentum going on. Okay, thank you very much. So we we'll make a, a, a second round. Uh, Anders Kazakam, thank you, and then you. Uh, Anders Kazakam, University of Toronto. My question is about the results you expect from the upcoming NATO summit. I know the Estonian and Lithuanian governments are pushing for NATO's enhanced for presence to be made permanent. Uh, currently it's on a rotational basis and we would like to see it uh, be permanent. Um, you've been talking to the US administration about this and I understand that there's some reluctance uh, to take that decision that the US would still prefer this rotational basis and I've sort of understood that one of the main issues is that they don't want to have to deal with uh, with family members being permanently housed in, in new bases in, uh, in the Baltic states, um, is this is this true? And how do you what do you, how do you expect this to play out? Will the U.S. support? Will you be able to convince the U.S. to support the permanent uh, presence as opposed to the rotational uh, presence at the moment? Okay, so we, we collect um, some more questions. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Um, thank you for offering a very clear position on NATO and on Russia. I'm Iverson, I'm a new member, a new team member of the Web Institute of Sarah Hong Kong and a resident of Estonia. Um, so I would like to turn everyone's attention to the second largest economy in the world and the most influential parliamentarian uh, regime, which has been constantly supporting Russia uh, regarding its invasion of Ukraine and also the global actor which has also committed um, genocide. 
So uh, my question is about public unity. Um, during 19 and 20th of November last year, uh, the high level future for democracy conference was held in Vilnius, uh, in which it aimed at uh, promoting democracy and trying to figure out some collective action um, against uh, authoritarian regimes, including Russia and China. So, as expected, the Lithuanian foreign minister attended, the Latvian foreign minister also attended, but then the Estonian foreign minister was absent. <laughs> While the, a few EU member states, including the ambassador at large uh, from France and Germany, and a few um, EU member states have also attended, and even the US undersecretary also attended this event. It is very concerning to me that um, the Estonian diplomatic representation was not made clear about its position about that. So, my question is, um, why is it so difficult to come up with a common Baltic position on China? In the fight, uh, in the fight against China, the Ukrainians should not be alone, and the Baltic states have to support that and make a very clear position about that. Thank you. So it's a story. What would be key foreign policy priority issues for Madrid need to submit uh, as well as the buildings need to submit? Well, we have one more question. Thank you, Angelica. Uh, a week and a half ago, the New York Times published an editorial that showed a shift from the very, from the fairly pro-Ukraine policy to yes, yeah, Ukraine is important, but we must be prudent. Yeah. At the same time, articles appeared in the New York Times criticized showing U.S. atrocities in other countries. Mm -hmm. To what extent are such shifts, as modest as they might be? Something that you follow, and to what extent should they concern uh, people, concern us? Okay, well, you can tell about later. Okay, and now what's uh, first about, you know, why you didn't attend the conference? <laughs> <laughs> it's all, always a story. It's always a story. Eh? Now, uh, uh, first questions first. The, the NATO summit, uh, uh, first, before, before the uh, war started, it was uh, uh, very clear that, uh, that one of the, the main issues, or uh, central themes of the uh, of the upcoming NATO su uh, summit, end of uh, end of June in Madrid, uh, would be uh, the uh, approval or uh, acceptance of the of the, of the uh, new NATO strategic concept, and it will still be uh, one of the. Uh, most important uh, uh, documents coming out of out that. This is uh, the uh, uh, the second uh, most important uh, uh, document of NATO after uh, the Washington Treaty itself, uh, uh, underlying uh, or the outlining the the, the uh, strategic aims, uh, uh, ways and means uh, of NATO. Uh, we expect this document to be very honest about the uh, security environment and also uh, very clear about the, uh, the, the fact that uh, collective defense uh, as a goal or, or as a, a task uh, is the most, most important for, uh, for NATO and that uh, uh, Russia is the most uh, important uh, security threat uh, for uh, Euro-Atlantic uh, uh, space. Uh, now, as you mentioned, uh, there is also the issue of uh, and as I mentioned before, that uh, there is also the issue of uh, strengthening the defense and deterrence posture on the uh, NATO uh, eastern flank. Uh, we uh, have been very clear about the need to move from, uh, and I hope I will not lose half of the audience now by using too many defense uh, uh, vocabulary, but, uh, but we've been very clear about uh, the need to move from uh, uh, deterrence by punishment uh, kind of approach where we have a, 
light uh, so-called tripwire forces uh, in, in the Baltic states, and then if uh, if there is uh, if, if there were uh, an aggression, then uh, uh, there would be uh, major uh, allied reinforcements to the area. That, uh, but we we should move to the uh, uh, to the deterrence by denial approach, which means that uh, at all times uh, there would uh, there should be uh, uh, NATO force uh, available uh, in uh, in NATO countries and other uh, Eastern flank countries, in Baltic countries and other uh, uh, Eastern flank countries that would be able to deny any any aggression. Uh, we think. Estonia thinks that uh, uh, that uh, the U.S. military presence uh, north of Suvalki Gap is necessary as a uh, both military as well as uh, political signal. Uh, uh, as far as uh, the uh, the presence in Estonia is concerned, we we do think that uh, that the U.S. is most uh, uh, suitable ally to fill some of the uh, capability gaps. But I, I won't go into too many uh, details right right now. Uh, we are uh, we are actively consulting with uh, U.S., U.K., and other allies uh, uh, to figure out uh, what the uh, what the new setup uh, may be. Uh, and we we really want to see. Uh, we think we need to see uh, from Madrid uh, uh, a very strong uh, commitment. Uh, of uh, the entire NATO to this uh, uh, new uh, concept. Now, regarding the uh, the uh, future democracy uh, conference, and uh, I'm embarrassed to say that I really don't know the circumstances around this uh, conference. I maybe maybe I shouldn't admit that, but, but this is the first time I I hear about this uh, conf conference. So I don't know. Uh, uh, who exactly represented Estonia, and uh, and uh, and uh, what were the uh, what were, were the circum circumstances around that? But as far as uh, uh, the attitude towards uh, China goes, uh, I don't see uh, that ma that much uh, daylight between the uh, the Baltic uh, Baltic countries. I do see uh, differences in uh, style and maybe tactics. Uh, but not uh, not about the assessment of the situation and uh, and the uh, uh, assessment what what we have to do in this uh, situation. Yes, there was some other question, but uh, I may have forgotten that. Oh, oh okay, <laughs> that was uh, the New York Times and uh, uh, the appeasement editorial. Uh, uh, you know, over the past uh, couple of uh, uh, months. There have been uh, uh, two different uh, schools of uh, of thought that uh, I personally have found uh, uh, rather disturbing uh, and and puzzlingly puzzlingly enough uh, these two very different uh, 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 different assessments uh, conclude with a very similar uh, uh, suggestion what to do the next. So first, uh, there were those who said that uh, that the Ukrainian military is doing uh, too well, uh, surprisingly well, maybe even too well, and that uh, they should uh, slow down uh, and uh, in order to avoid the embarrassment uh, or humiliation for Putin, should uh, uh, agree to some kind of uh, uh, settlement whereby uh, part of Ukraine would still uh, stay with uh, with Russia. And secondly, uh, and uh, this is uh, now emerging louder than the, than the, uh, than the former, is, is the assessment that, uh, that uh, uh, Ukrainians uh, uh, will lose the, the, uh, the war anyway, uh, and uh, Russians are doing so much better uh, in Donbass and in the south, so Ukrainians should rather, uh, uh, again, uh, find a settlement very soon that uh, that would uh, give uh, uh, part of Ukraine to to uh, to Ukraine. So either they are doing too well or they are not doing well at, at all. They they should uh, still uh, give part of Ukraine away uh, to uh, to Russia. We very strongly uh, object uh, these uh, uh, these assessments and and uh, these suggestions. 
for the very reasons that I described before. If, uh, if Russia were to gain anything from this aggression, then uh, uh, the repercussions will not be just limited to uh, Ukraine, but to the entire European security, and uh, I, I would argue uh, even globally, uh, there will uh, there will be uh, uh, different existing and maybe future conflicts uh, affected by by, by the <coughs> settlement. Yeah, thank you. Uh, please, <coughs> thanks for questions. So I, on the NATO, I think I will um, I will have it, uh, I will you know. Not so much to add uh, what Christian said, I just wanted probably to say that it's that is one of those issues where all three Baltics are working very closely together, so that uh, probably whatever you can, I mean, Latvia will answer, I think it's more or less will be the same, I mean, but uh, at least they can answer, so I think we are very closely working to the, together with NATO, I mean, regarding our security arrangements uh, after, let's say, Madrid. Um, on uh, Estonia and uh, participation in, in, in the Democracy Conference uh, in, in Vilnius, which was actually prior to the Democracy Summit in the United States, but President Biden was organizing the Enlightenment in later on. Um, so the Estonian colleague, he will, I will tell him everything about that one. But I think I can agree that what he said that there is not a huge difference, let's say, for both the countries regarding uh, China policy. And that's true, of course, I mean, we know that uh, we differently maybe approach uh, Lithuania decided to leave 17 plus 1, we decided to stay 16 plus 1, hoping that that will die a natural cause uh, sooner or later, I mean, because activities are, uh, let's say, dying down, I mean, for different reasons, one, one of those reasons is COVID. Uh, which is still, as you know very well, I mean, in China, that's a huge issue. I mean, not only so much about 16 plus 1, about, but speaking even about Chinese economy in general. Uh, so, I mean, and there has been always support for uh, Lithuania from uh, all Baltic, uh, from Estonia and Latvia regarding, uh, uh, you know, the trade war, uh, so that uh, with China, so that it's uh, together with European Union we have supported, you know. Uh, claim, claim to the World Trade Organization, so that I think, as Christian said, there is, could be a difference in tactics, I mean, how you achieve the goals, I mean, but I think we are quite, quite, uh, quite united in that field. On, uh, on New York Times, I think I can agree with what Christian mentioned, I mean, uh, there are different uh, ways of different talks, I mean, the latest, as you notice, has been uh, Kissinger in, in Davos, uh, you know, speaking about uh, uh, well, about the same issues, so that it's at the end. I mean that what we are officially all are saying, and and whatever we understand. I mean, what could be a difficulty for Ukraine, but at the end, it's Ukraine who has to decide uh, what and how they will, uh, what the directions they are going to do. Uh, don't talk with uh, with uh, with, uh, with President Putin in this case. So, what will be his uh, solution? I think that. We are ready to support whatever decision Ukrainian uh, state and nation is taking. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, Nate, absolutely agree with what my colleague said, and just I would like to add that uh, uh, we have to. We are going from the point that um, Russian aggression has fundamentally changed security situation in the region. Therefore, decisions at the upcoming NATO summit in Madrid should reflect new radically changed security environment. NATO has to reset its deterrence and defense posture to ensure NATO is fully prepared to defend frontline states from the very first minute of conflict. NATO current tripwire strategy in our region should be replaced by the adapted forward defense posture. Lithuania is in an extremely vulnerable position due to a heavily militarized Kaliningrad and Russian Belarus military integration. Therefore, NATO must be fully prepared to defend Baltic states from the very first minute of potential conflicts. So it's, um, we are very much waiting summit in Madrid and really expect that uh, uh, decisions will, will lead to strengthening NATO and to security in, in the Baltic region. Uh, as concerned uh, uh, that question, to, uh, I would like just to stress what I was said in my initial statement that uh, conditions uh, by the, for the ending 
the war must be set only by Ukraine. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So I think we'll do one more round of questions. Council Medal for Masters, thank you for taking the time to be here today. My name is Chris. My question is related to defense policy. When I attended the Vilnius School on military security, a hypothetical conventional war between Russia and the three Baltic states is discussed. Representatives of the German military, the NATO battalion commander, and officials of the Lithuanian Ministry of Defense stated that the hypothetical time that the people of the state to hold out would be two to three days. Unfortunately, with the situation in Ukraine, we now have a current example of Russian military capability in a conventional war in Europe. Given this data, is there anything that you can say that indicates that this theoretical time frame has changed? Thank you. Before you go, the International Center for Defense and Security. Uh, first of all, I'd like to reflect on what uh, Ambassador Briggs said of the Serbian uh, aid, that the peace uh, very well uh, noticed despite the uh, Ukraine war. I was three weeks ago in Kharkiv, without diplomatic passports and without direct education, the Serbian passport was uh, just enough to go to the Jewish reporters or the many places. The question goes to all the Ambassador. Uh, I see it uh, seems to me that the people in Ukraine and everybody in this room is um, well, on the same, same page. Uh, what would be the main problems or, or uh, disagreements uh, between the uh, Baltic States and the uh, United States? Thank you. Are there more questions? chance to. Okay, so then um, I have a. So, uh, one more question from my side. So, you were, uh, what we uh, heard from your talk is so that the Baltic states have much more sensitive antenna uh, of what is going on in Russia. Uh, but if we look, let's say, at the debate in the uh, European Union, so we see that the uh, oil embargo, gas embargo, so it's obviously not so easy to get the uh, support from all members. So how do you uh, assess uh, the situation? So uh, would you think that uh, you are able to convince uh, those rather hesitating states or do you see rather danger that the tough European position will weaken in the near future? All right, so I don't know. So. Um, would you start? Yeah. You have the mic for one second. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, first about the military scenarios. Uh, I don't know what ex what exercise it was exactly or who attended, but uh, but certainly Estonian military uh, plan is not to. To surrender after two or three, three days. <laughs> our 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 plan is more uh, to the tune of uh, of uh, Ronald Reagan's strategy. We win, they lose. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, but more seriously speaking, uh, and I mean th this was all serious. But uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but but adding to that, uh, uh, we've uh, made. Uh, we made for years uh, significant investments in uh, in uh, defense material and personnel uh, training reserves. I myself attended the reserve exercise uh, in Estonia last week. Uh, not that I'm, I'm the only one that attended, uh, and uh, we we are pretty confident that our uh, our military uh, is ready uh, to take take on them if they want to. But hopefully they won't won't want to. Now, uh, our uh, in the near in the near term, we will have uh, uh, also considerable investments in uh, longer range weapons uh, to create together with uh, Latvians and Lithuanians, and uh, in some cases with Poles, 
uh, soon enough, hopefully also together with uh, Finns and uh, Swedes, operational and strategic dilemmas uh, for Russians. So basically, if they think that uh, that they, they can get away with, uh, let's say, occupying a part of uh, our territory, then we can uh, inflict uh, serious pain to them uh, in some other areas or, or some other domains. And, uh, and we are pretty serious about that. Uh, so uh, uh, we can discuss it uh, a bit late, a uh, bit more uh, later. Later, but uh, but I certainly don't uh, uh, see uh, the military scenarios in such uh, uh, dark colors. At least not yet. Uh, even though we we think that uh, Russians uh, will speed up their military de 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 developments, no matter what, uh, basing uh, based on the lessons learned from the Ukrainian uh, uh, Ukrainian war. Uh, and the uh, disagreements with the, with the U.S. Uh, I would say that uh, at this point we have very very little attention to any other issues than uh, uh, than the war anyway. And in the case of war, uh, we don't we really uh, don't have any uh, serious disagreements. We may discuss. Uh, uh, whether whether certain certain uh, uh, statements should be made at at particular time, we may discuss whether uh, whether it's uh, uh, wise to do uh, one or other thing in certain formats. But uh, when it, when it comes to the strategic games, when it comes to uh, to uh, what we do in a grand scheme of things, uh, we are of the same same view very much. And uh, the sanctions, uh, that, uh, that's a good one, of course. Uh, I think EU has uh, surprised uh, even itself by being uh, very forward-leaning with, with sanctions uh, from, the, uh, from the beginning of this war. Now with the sixth uh, uh, package uh, that uh, has been discussed for a couple of weeks already, uh, we've, uh, we've seen some hiccups. And uh, and uh, frankly, uh, we in Estonia we are we are certainly not happy at all that the discussion over uh, the oil sanctions, particularly, uh, have uh, taken so long and have not progressed uh, the way uh, we we would have hoped to. Ultimately, we would be happy with anything that uh, that denies uh, uh, Russia uh, uh, the. Proceeds of uh, of oil sales uh, as much as possible, and uh, uh, but but we would uh, need to uh, not rest, uh, sit back and relax then, but uh, but uh, work further to make sure that uh, we can uh, further sanction the uh, oil and gas uh, gas trade. We have to squeeze uh, this uh, source of income uh, from them. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Evo. Just add um, on uh, problematic or disagreement issues, so that I mean, I can agree with uh, with Christian. I mean, at the moment, it's only let's say security in Europe in general. That's that's an issue. I mean, so we are all working. Uh, I mean, to, to to find a solution. I mean, on a bilateral basis, of course, we have had a couple of the, let's say problematic issues. I mean, let's say for Latvian uh, Latvian case, that could be uh, AML, so the money laundering issues, which we have uh, let's say successfully uh, managed to to get take uh, to to take it off the table. And also, let's say, restitution issues, so that which has been taken off the table as well. So those are the minor ones. Let's say uh, issues we are discussing. We were discussing uh, among the strategic partners in this case on uh, sanctions. Uh, I think I can agree with Christian said that we were all surprised, Americans and also Europeans, that we have managed to do it very quickly instead of you know elaborating it for at least uh, six months, I mean, so then, and, and then, you know, finally come up with something. I think on the sixth package, sooner or later, we will, we will also manage to, uh, to get results that we are all looking for. Uh, so, and on defense uh, part, I think uh, Christian is the, the best expert I mean, <laughs> uh, among three of us, so that I completely agree with what he said. Okay, so. 
Ja, dus zo, en de griez, het depends, we hebben expert en we live what you said. And, uh, concerning all problems disagreement with the United States, um, I, we do not see any, any, any problems or agreements. If there are situations and maybe different opinion, but most important is that we always find a uh, solution and agreement on, on many, many issues. And um, discussions even sometimes uh, lead to, to the best, better result and, and decisions. So we're very happy with cooperation. Concerning can you, yes, uh, we're losing the speed, and especially concerning six package of, of sanctions and uh, some other issues. But also, we, we are sure that we will find uh, agreement and decision in EU will be taken. Yeah, thank you very much. So actually we are running out of time. So um, I'm not fully sure whether uh, one of you would have would like to have the mic once again for some final words. But I think uh, the situation is dynamic, so there's maybe even no uh, possibility to make some final conclusion of what we have been discussing. So. But I would like to thank you very much for coming out to Seattle and being here early in the morning and just talking to us. So thanks uh, uh, very much for uh, coming and also thanks to the auditorium for taking part in this uh, interesting discussion. So thank you very much. All.